I am back. I am doing part two of my videos on the top three things that I did when I was recovering from chronic fatigue syndrome or ME. Quite a few people were asking for specifically the top three things you did to get well. So this part two is the three main categories or the three main focus areas uh, that I did a lot of the work that significantly contributed to my recovery. I want to be very clear that this really is just a video sharing my experience about what worked for me because I am not a doctor or a medical health professional of any kind. All I know is what after many years of trial and error and experimentation on my own body and tons of research and visiting lots of doctors, all of that led to me eventually learning and tweaking my recovery program and figuring out what worked for myself. What I'm about to share with you is likely gonna sound to some people a bit too simple to be effective. Because although none of what ended up working for me was easy, it was pretty simple in nature. Fairly simple things that when rigorously followed did wonders for my health. In my experience, these things that I'm sharing here really are the starting point for reaching extraordinary results. So it definitely wasn't an overnight fix, but these things were powerful in their ability to change the overall trajectory of my health over time. Nothing changed quickly, but in time, with these new practices of mine that I kept up consistently day after day, week after week, month after month, my health really began to soar, finally, after so many years of struggle. So what I'm sharing is a big idea for success that's wrapped up in a disarmingly simple package. Explaining it can be easy, but buying into it, I appreciate, can be tough. But success leaves clues. I could see over time, actually almost immediately, that these things were working for me, which meant that my motivation stayed strong because I knew, finally, 100% that I was on the right track. All right, let's do this. The three main focus areas in my chronic fatigue syndrome or ME recovery that got me the farthest uh, number one, and in no particular order, I uh, will start with diet. So it worked for me when it came to changes that I made with my diet. I'll start first with the things that I stopped. So first I stopped, I had to stop the obvious things, um, things like processed foods, all the junk food out there, all the added sugar, it really had to go. And this seems obvious and almost like it should go without saying, but I know that so many of us are still eating a lot of this stuff. All the stuff that you find at convenience stores, all the packaged goods, all the highly processed stuff, highly sugary stuff. And I think a lot of us, myself included, through many points in my life, we convince ourselves that it isn't really that bad. Or is it maybe if we just cut it down a little bit that we'll be okay. But in my experience, this food was like poison. It had to go. Uh, I also had to remove caffeine, uh, which is, I know, a tough one for a lot of people to uh, contemplate, uh, especially when you have something like chronic fatigue syndrome, ME, it, we can grow quite reliant on caffeine. I didn't even realize the extent uh, that caffeine was actually bringing a lot of struggle and suffering into my day. So I would have that coffee or that caffeinated beverage and I would feel better for a bit and then I would crash hardcore. And some, some of what I was attributing to chronic fatigue syndrome crashes actually was just a caffeine crash. So when I was able to get rid of the caffeine, it leveled out my energy throughout the day more. Uh, so I didn't get that big pick me up in the morning, but I also didn't get that big rebound crash in the afternoon. And the third thing that I had to cut out was alcohol. Now, I've had an interesting journey with alcohol with this illness. When I first got ill, I cut it out completely for about two years. And in that two years, I did see pro progress with my health uh, to a point. And then for years I coasted with this illness um, and I wasn't so much actively working on recovery as I was just actively working on trying to get through my life. And during this time I did consume alcohol and one of these days I will definitely do a video just on my experience of alcohol and chronic fatigue syndrome because I find this fascinating because alcohol could almost be like a superpower for me. It didn't seem to matter how sick I was, how exhausted I was, to a point. Um, in my early years when I was really quite sick, I don't think all the alcohol in the world would have um, given me any energy, but when I was more midway in my recovery, I found that when I consumed alcohol, all of a sudden the symptoms of CFS seemed to almost disappear. I could 
you know, sit and chat with people for hours. I just, it really was incredible, the energy that it gave me if I consumed enough of it. Uh, but needless to say, this was a really, really unhealthy coping uh, strategy and it was not getting me anywhere in terms of my overall recovery process. So in addition to removing processed foods, uh, sugar, caffeine, and alcohol, there were also some things that I added into my diet or changed in my diet, which really made such a world of difference with my health. One thing that I started doing that was such a game changer for me was to start loading up my uh, diet with food-based probiotics. I've talked about this in other videos before. I've taken probiotics in supp supplement form. Um, I don't even know how many hundreds or thousands of dollars I've spent on probiotic supplements and they never seem to do anything for me. But as soon as I switched to food-based probiotics through fermented foods, all of a sudden I started seeing all sorts of improvements in my body with my digestion, my gut health, my immune system. It just really was spectacular. So every day I started incorporating fermented foods into my diet, whether it be things like kimchi or sauerkraut, uh, all the other fermented vegetables out there, kombucha, and this really did a world of good for my overall recovery process. The next thing I added in, or the next thing that I changed, uh, was switching to a whole foods, plant-based diet. So essentially a healthy vegan diet, because there are many, many <laughs> incredibly unhealthy vegan foods out there. So just because something is labeled vegan, it does not mean that it's healthy. But whole foods, fruits, vegetables, uh, nuts, seeds, uh, beans, lentils, you know, all the different legumes out there, grains, all of these foods for me do me a world of good. I had tried for quite a long time eating something that resembled more like a keto diet and I did see some progress with my health, uh, but when I made that switch to the whole foods plant-based diet, it really just took off. It really was such a game changer for me in terms of my recovery, my, you know, it reduced my post-exertional malaise, it helped my endurance for life improve, it helped so many things. Just like with the fermented foods, it also further helped to improve my digestion, uh, it helped things like my skin, my, my sleep, my hormones became more balanced. Uh, it really has just been phenomenal. I could go on and on the results that I've seen in my body from a whole food plant-based diet. And the last thing that I started doing with my diet uh, was to incorporate two different types of fasting. So one is intermittent fasting, where I shortened the number of hours during the day during which I was consuming solid food. When I was right in the middle of uh, my full-blown recovery program, uh, the window of time during which I ate solid food ranged anywhere from four to eight hours. So for example, an eight hour food window, which is what I still do now, I have kept this up throughout to this day, is I eat breakfast at 10 a.m. and I eat dinner by six. So all of my food during the day, and I eat lunch in the middle of that as well, uh, but all my food during the day is consumed between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., which gives me 16 hours every single day where my body gets a break. I've really found that by giving my organs a break and my, just my body in general a break from constantly you know, shoving food in, that it really thrives and does better in all other areas. So you know, it can use that time, devote that energy to doing other things like healing. And then in addition to the intermittent fasting, that I do. I also do periodic juice cleansing. And what I mean by this is just any set period of time where I consume nothing but low glycemic, uh, mostly vegetable juice with a little bit of fruit thrown in. So this could be anywhere from 24 hours to three days is the longest that I do now. And I do this right now uh, three times a year. So every four months on my calendar, a reminder pops up and it tells me it's time to do a juice cleanse. And for three days, I consume nothing but uh, low glycemic vegetable juice. And when I was actively healing from CFS or ME, uh, I did it a little bit more often. Not necessarily more three-day cleanses, but I would supplement that with some 24-hour ones uh, speckled in between because I've found that those bigger breaks really catapulted my health. I did. All right, the second main focus area for me and my recovery was to do everything that I could to support my body's own ability to heal. So one part of this for me, one massive part of this is sleep. 
which is something else that I think that many of us take for granted. And the healing that happened in my body while I was sleeping was virtually impossible to replicate with anything else. So I needed to get really, really serious about sleep. Sleep at all costs became my mantra. And something else I did to support my body and its own healing efforts was just to make sure that I was getting some sun as much as possible. I think especially when we are chronically ill, uh, this is something that can get overlooked. At least I know for me that it did because when you're not feeling well, you're indoors a lot and it can be easy to discount the, you know, things like getting some exposure to sun. But for me, this was really important in helping my body to stay strong. And then I also did everything I could to support my body's lymphatic system. So I'm not a doctor, I will you know, describe this as best as I can, uh, but as, as I understand it, uh, you know, we have a, a significant amount of lymph fluid in our body, more than we have blood actually, uh, and it you know, circulates throughout our body and helps to uh, keep us healthy. But unlike our blood, which has its own pump, our heart, the lymphatic system does not. There is no pump. So it relies on us doing things so that the system can keep moving. So things like, for me, uh, taking alternating hot and cold showers really helped. Things like massages, rebounding on rebounders, uh, dry skin brushing, uh, any kind of movement that you can manage all helps the lymphatic system. So I had to make sure that every single day, throughout the day, periodically, as much as I could manage, I was doing things that meant that my lymphatic system was doing the work that it needed to be doing in order for me to recover. And number three uh, of my focus areas that I'm talking about today, and this certainly wasn't everything, uh, but these were the three main things that I focused on. Uh, the third one was physically building strength back up in my body through exercise. And again, I want to really stress that this is just what worked for me because especially when it comes to exercise, in my experience with chronic fatigue syndrome or ME, it can do a lot of damage. So what worked for me in the end, and I had years of failed attempts at exercise programs, no matter how many times I tried, uh, I felt so much worse afterwards and it seemed like it was always just making me worse. There were times along the way where I started to make little bits of progress with exercise, enough to show me that it had potential with my recovery process, but I was never able to keep it up long enough um, to really see any real progress. It always led to health crashes and severe post-exertional malaise, so it was a really tough thing for me. When it finally worked for me in the end, I had <laughs> it was you know, a big part of it was just putting my ego aside and really just changing the way I thought about exercise. Because even though in the past my attempts had been so incredibly small, they were still too big. In the end, what worked for me was um, one, completely ditching cardio. Uh, I did not do virtually any cardio at all and I put all my focus on strength training and I started so small and so gentle. I started with one to two minutes per day or every second day. I couldn't even always manage every day and I would just do something very small to build strength in my body. So maybe, you know, a couple squats on my in my living room or maybe a couple push-ups off my kitchen counter while I was standing. Just really gentle stuff and I slowly built from there. You know, with the, as the weeks passed on, I'd add on another minute or two minutes to my workout and I kept building. And after about a year of this, and it was very difficult, even at this really slow pace, but after about a year, I was up to about hour long workouts of moderate intensity. And after about two years of this, I was working out six days a week uh, vigorously, as hard uh, and intensely as I wanted to. So there you go, you've got it. The three main focus areas of my recovery program. And again, this wasn't everything. It would be a lot to cover in one video, but to give you a starting place, a jumping off point uh, for what my recovery looked like. Those were three big areas for me. Something I found helpful for me keeping me on track with all of this because it is a lot to try and remember like am I on top of my diet and this and that and all these different other things is I built for myself a checklist and I had a reminder that popped up on my calendar once a month and when that reminder popped up I'd review my checklist and I would just see how many of these things I actually 
um, all these things that I believed to be important, I was actually staying on top of. And it was a good opportunity for me to see the places where I was doing well and to see the places where I maybe needed to um, pick up the slack a little bit. So I'll put a link in the video description if you'd like to check out my checklist that I used during my recovery. And also if you'd like to check out my full recovery story, if you want to hear about what it was like for me to get sick, what it was like living with chronic fatigue syndrome or ME, and then the things, all the things that I did step by step that eventually allowed me to recover, I'd love for you to check out my book, Finding Freedom, Escaping from the Prison of Chronic Fatigue Syndrome. All right, that's it. Uh, comments, suggestions, questions, please leave them below. I am pretty much 100% figuring out what future videos to make off of the suggestions that you guys give me. So thank you for everything that you've been suggesting to me. That's the reason this video today happened. Uh, and I'd love to hear what you'd love to hear more about. So please let me know. And I'd love to connect with you. Uh, if we haven't already, so please come find me. Please come say hello. Uh, I'm uh, Raylan.Agel on Instagram. You can find me there. And then I'm Raylan.Agel on Facebook. And tell me a bit about your story because I'd really love to hear it and leave it in the comments below because I'm sure other people would love to read a bit about your story here as well. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care everyone.